Firstly, thank you very much for accepting my invitation and accepting to be on my show. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Thank you for inviting me. So I've gone through your profile and uh, I came to know that uh, you're managing a, a company and your founder and uh, you also worked in different roles. So I thought to tell about you and uh, your work to my audience. Yeah, great. I'm ready. I'm ready and excited to get to know you, the work you're doing, your audience. And um, I'm just uh, grateful that you're sharing your platform with me. So before that, can you please introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Krista Rhyme. I am the founder of CruteX, where I connect um, really top diverse tech talent with inclusive startups. So I help companies build strong, robust teams full of diversity, whether that's engineering, product, um, analytics, um, design, marketing, and sales. And then I also help people find the careers and the jobs that um, they'll really be able to thrive in. So I do coaching. I will do a LinkedIn and resume makeover. And then um, I create the digital profiles to showcase my candidates that we use for outreach. And these profiles include short form videos of candidates introducing themselves and answering um, typical questions they would in um, a first round interview. And then me and my team take that profile and go out and connect with hiring managers and promote them and get uh, my candidates jobs that way too. So it's It's a two-part business. I work with companies and candidates. So when you started this, you're from? I am from um, San Jose, California, where I currently reside. Yep. And so I'm originally from Minnesota. I started my career out there at Best Buy, and then I was recruited to come out to California um, to advance auto parts and be on a product development team. We actually launched their website for them. And so um, that gave me the opportunity to come to California and Silicon Valley. Uh, So when you started this company? Yeah, I started this company um, about a year and a half ago. Um, So it came about, um, I was in a lot of um, previous roles. So I've been in engineering, I've been in product, I've been in marketing, um, in a lot of different companies. And throughout my journey, I just really saw firsthand the lack of diversity. Um, and so I took a step back and thought, like, how can I um, make an impact? How can I take everything that I've learned being in tech for over 15 years and help make it more diverse and inclusive? So I transferred over into recruiting. Um, it was a new area for me. But then I put on, you know, my product development hat and found areas of um, improving the recruiting and hiring experience for both candidates and hiring managers. And so um, what I did is, Everything up to the first round um, interview is pretty much repeatable. I mean, I'm sure you've done a lot of interviews and answered the same type of questions over and over again. And you maybe even been in some interviews with hiring managers where they were a little unengaged because they were asking the same questions like over and over again. So I thought, why don't we um, operationalize this? Why don't we record these typical questions and have candidates answer it? Why don't candidates give work demonstrations, recorded video? So then um, one, the candidates can just do it once and they don't have to do it over and over again. And then it gives the hiring managers more insights into who is applying. You know, I don't think you can fully showcase your talents and abilities just on a resume. I like to say that we as talent, as creators are more than just bullet points on a resume. And so I'm creating a platform to showcase the talents and abilities and then also a way for hiring managers to be more engaged. They really, um, the feedback I've gotten, they really like in watching these videos, getting to know their candidates so that when they do come in into the interview process, they can have more in-depth and meaningful conversations. Uh, you worked in tech for 15 years, so that much experience you have, uh, you saw a lot of things, uh, uh, you know how, you said you, you also worked in engineering, so uh, 15 years is a very big number, so uh, the, yeah, the, the, Yes, yeah, so my area of expertise um, was in data, digital data. So I collected user behavioral data from platforms like Adobe Analytics, Google Analytics, and any like third party um, platforms that would mine data. And so I started out um, as an analyst that would take this data and be, how do we make this a better customer experience? How do we optimize our marketing spend? But then um, throughout that journey, uh, my data was junk. I'm like, why am I having such bad data? You know, as an analyst, you spend so much time cleansing that data 
to get any valuable insight. So I started hanging around the engineering team and be like, why are you handing me such bad data? Right. Um, and I found out that there was just a communication air between, you know, engineering and business. It's like they spoke two different languages. So I got more involved, just inserted myself into the process and started working with engineers um, of how, as an analyst, we need data, how, um, how, what format it needs to come in and what instance it needs to come in. And so I became uh, more of an instrumentation facilitator. And then from there, I got really curious. I wanted to be able to do you know, the engineering part myself. So I taught myself um, some front end code um, and then as a project, I taught myself, you know, more of the back end to be a full stack. And it just evolved from there. Um, I really tried to learn everybody's job around me, like really understand like what their roles were. So I knew in my job how to eliminate pain points. And so from there, you know, I got to work in marketing and marketing tech platforms to help eliminate pain points. I got to work in product um, to eliminate pain points on the product and so um, I really just tried to insert myself and learn as much as I could about all these roles, um, not knowing that one day it would be really valuable that I can create a business out of it um, because now I go into companies, help build teams. I've either been on that team or supported that type of team and can give um, companies really valuable insights around how employees think, what they really want, what they really need to thrive. Um, yeah, so that's like was my journey in tech so in this one and so in this one one and a half year so what you did yeah so it started out with me just going out and recruiting and really trying to um be part of different communities um with with the pandemic it really allowed us to create communities online in different ways so you know i was on facebook groups um, of a lot of different communities there. So like black women in tech, Latinas in tech, like every intersection that you could think of, um, there's a group on Facebook um, to really inject yourself into, understand what the pain points are and offer solutions. Um, and so it was Facebook, Discord, Slack. And so with all of that, I learned that um, one, candidates were really tired of the interview process and they didn't feel like um, they were seen or heard. Um, and so I thought, wow, um, here's an I, how do we give candidates a platform to do this? And so I developed um, these digital profiles, um, which includes um, assessment results. So you can get to know your candidates through assessments. It includes, you know, links to resume, um, supporting docs like LinkedIn, and then also these short form videos, which answers the questions um, that you typically would in an interview. And so the creation of um, this digital profile, as you know, had many iterations because we're constantly improving, but that was my um, my main product going into this, is creating these profiles and then helping hiring managers um, look at these profiles with a different type of lens. So um, initially I told you about assessment results, right? And immediately people think of assessments as a way to eliminate candidates, right? You don't make these benchmarks you know, um, you're out of the cut. And I feel like we are really missing out on a lot of great talent by just using assessments as benchmarks to eliminate. I say I use my assessments to empower. So I have a lot of great candidates that maybe in some areas they need additional support, right? So I work with a lot of marketing candidates um, that have really great ideas that can really tap into new communities and get the message across, but maybe they weren't um, trained in writing and in short copy and things like that. And so what type of support can we get them up to speed so they can take all their talents and then couple this with, you know, um, support that they need maybe in copywriting. So there's tools out there like Grammarly, like Jasper AI, you can um, connect them with a mentor to help them in this area and then get them to where they need to be to fully thrive. But if we just cut that person out, you know, you're missing out on a lot of great opportunities. So I'm trying to get employers too throughout this experience to shift their mind of how they think about talent of more as a, what can we do for employees so they can thrive instead of where I feel like the mentality is right now is as um, employees or 
going through the interview process, like, what can you do for our company? Um, and we need to have that mind shift. So um, I don't know if you've been in a lot of uh, maybe consumer facing products or even B2B consumer um, B2B products. But um, when we're out there delivering to our customers in that capacity, we always are like, oh, how can we serve our customer? How can we give the best experience? And through this, you know, we've developed better onboarding processes, right? Like, so our customers can onboard quickly. We developed um, tools for them to be able to use the features at ease, right? Um, it could be videos, tool tips, seminars, webinars, all of this for us to give the best customer experience. And so what I want to do is take that same mentality of how can we do this for our employees, right? How can we quickly onboard them and give them everything that they need so they can like add value on day one? How, what tools do they need to support themselves and their job to fully thrive, right? Um, I even would love to see just more of a support team just for employees development, right? Like um, similar how we have a resource section and um, support for our customers. So my mission is to take that same mindset of a wonderful customer experience and shift that to a wonderful employee experience. So uh, how how will be the questions uh, for uh, our candidates? Uh, for different roles, there will be different uh, types of interviews. Yeah, yeah. So depending upon the role, um, you know, we'll answer a typical type of questions, whether it's um, marketing or design or engineering. Um, engineering is, um, you know, we'll focus more on those technical questions to make sure you know the philosophies. Um, but what what is the really big strong point for my candidates, no matter what role they're in, is their work demonstration. So let's say um, you're an engineer, front end engineer, maybe um, you might give a demonstration on CodePen about, um, you know, a homepage that you developed and, you know, that you can use React and style everything correctly, things like that. Um, um, a marketer might have a go-to-market plan and strategy for a product that they love, right? So everything is specifically tailored for that role and for your profession. So how many how many candidates got benefit because of your thought? Oh, wow. Yeah, so I have placed um, directly with customers about 20 candidates now um, with other candidates that I've helped. So I've Wow, I've literally spoken to probably thousands of candidates that I've helped and mentored. So, you know, the halo effect of that, um, but like hundreds, hundreds on that end. So um, I work directly with companies and get candidates that way where I go out and source and really work. But then I also are out in groups and I'm speaking, um, you know, hold workshops. I do one on one. Like if you, um, really want advice and want to, you know, a half an hour and we can talk about a strategy with your career. Um, I jump on one on ones that way. So I really tried to make myself available to everybody. Uh, so you're giving service only to uh, uh, citizens from uh, US or uh, from all, all around the world? No, I all around the world. Like, um, I believe talent um, is global, right? And when you're coming in from different walks of life, different experiences, that adds value. Um, and so it's really important that we're, we're a global community, right? Um, and, you know, a lot of companies in the U.S. are global companies, so they need those insights. You just can't have all the same employees. So um, I've worked with candidates um, from Mexico, from you know, Kenya, Nigeria, India, love India, <laughs> um, like some European countries, so like all over, um, and it's really great to see. And it's a good learning experience for me too, because um, learning the differences in culture, like um, work ethic and things of that nature. So the more that I learn about these different cultures, I can be an advocate for when I go into companies about you know the different communication styles or saying like oh that's a communication style and you're taking offense to this they didn't mean offense and help bridge gaps that way and so um that's one thing i also experienced a lot being in tech and working with a bunch of different cultures that i think that we could do better at is just really 
um, understanding each other's points of view and having like that compassion and working together that way um, instead of being trapped in our own bubbles, let's say, yeah. And uh, you also work as advisor at uh, Shopify, and you are you are uh, in this position for one year, six months. Yeah, um, at Shopify, I'm a, their advisor over like their data strategy and marketing, um, and so I also help um, other companies from that that way. And then once they grow too, I'll roll, I'll grow into helping them build out their teams, but. It's a wonderful platform. Um, I tend to want to be a part of projects I think are really innovative and groundbreaking. So Shopify is changing the way um, consumers are shopping and making it a full immersive experience. So think like you can create your own mood boards and your own genres around your style, but then have that be a companion with like a Spotify playlist. And so you can post that and so you can go through other people's moods and genres and like styles of their boards. So it's a different way of, um, of shopping. You can shop by um, holistic styles instead of trying to find those individual pieces yourself. And then I like it. Um, they're even advancing of um, your playlist that you create around your mood and your style of your clothes, of um, integrating that with other sort of like light sensory technology. And so you can hook it up to your Alexa and then like depending on the mood, your lights and your house could change while you're shopping. So they're trying to create a fully at home immersive shopping experience. Um, and it's a really great project to be a part of. So uh, you said uh, you work, you give service to uh, different country people. So do uh, uh, what, what, uh, what do you observe in uh, different country people? Uh, do they communicate in the, in the same way? But technology is common for everybody, but uh, I'm sure you will see people having different backgrounds uh, uh, coming in uh, two different perspectives. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, every culture is very unique, but the, yeah, there's definitely different communication styles. I would say, um a big thing what i personally experienced in tech was um overcoming stereotypes with with different types of um people that you're working with um was a big thing and so really having that education of learning the culture the history communication style to overcome those biases is really critical um and then what i also just like is asking people about their experiences in tech. So, you know, um, uh, I've uh, talked to some women in India in some regions where um, this is their first opportunity to have roles like this, or they learned um, part of their programming just on a whiteboard because they didn't have access to computers and things like that. Um, and just to be able to spread that awareness so people know and can like help and contribute um, is also very um, important. So uh, yeah, I would just encourage just hiring managers, people in tech in general to just go out and speak to different, you know, expertise in tech around the world and get their perspectives and you never know what um, new ideas are coming. I mean, uh, India is pumping out a ton of unicorns right now, right? And so there's a lot of investment going to India. Um, Nigeria in the fintech is like blowing up over there. And so I feel like with these areas that we could go and learn and collaborate and, and make um, better global products instead of it being really centralized in one country. And uh, you worked as a CEO of Pride Places and Pride Places. Yeah, Pride Places was um, a great community. They are creating safe places for people in the LGBTQ um, community. Um, and so I was there for about a year and helped that product and it went through an incredible transformation. Um, and so that's something that I feel like in tech, we all have to be really adaptable and really listen to our customers. So it started out as, um, kind of a listing directory, we would like to say like a gay Yelp. Um, and we were onboarding our businesses and customers, but we were really thinking about, can the scale, like what value are we gonna add with this 
that Yelp can't add, right? Yelp is very established. You know, it's really hard to compete against. And so we started um, talking to our users, getting out in the community more and understanding like what does the community really want? And they wanted more like educational resources. So let's say you were maybe transitioning. Um, what does that process look like? There's not a lot of um, documentation out there or pictures or people's experiences all in one place for that experience. So um, more resources and then just a space for people to be able to gather online um, and communicate. Um, I'm from a really originally a small, 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 small town of a thousand people in Minnesota. And so I always like to put myself in that lens. Like if I was a member of that community in Minnesota, I would be completely isolated, right? So how can we create spaces for people that are in isolation to like be able to escape, be accepted and have that community? And so that's what Pride Places has shifted into now. Um, yeah, and I'm really excited to see them grow. And also you worked as analytical uh, analytics uh, consultant at uh, Hum Hum and you worked there for three months. Yeah, it, that was just um, a job I took. Uh, it was around helping um, analyze uh, user behavior data for a couple of their clients. Um, and so I, I love to go in and do uh, an analysis of the overall situation. And so I would look at you know, their data instrumentation is their data good from their data? I would look at how users are using their um, applications. Uh, are they using their desktop application differently than their app application? Um, and then I gather in all this information and then I do a full analysis of what I would recommend it, uh, for instrumentation, what I would recommend for, you know, product changes to create a better experience. And then I also recommend um, technical solutions that we could glean better insights out of. And so that's what I did for Harham. Nice. And also you worked as a senior digital analytics platform manager and you worked there uh, for two years, three months. Hotwire is a company. Yeah, Hotwire. So um, a lot of these jobs, again, are in the similar um, um, field. So for there at Hotwire, I manage their Adobe Analytics platform and a couple other like logging platforms. And so what I would do is um, work with the product managers um, and understand what, what was going to be released. Um, if it was an update to a feature, if it was a new feature and make sure that the tracking was correct on there so we could get insights into how users were using it. And then I would um, either implement the tracking myself because I would use um, a take management system, which gave me access to um, data layers and I could collect myself. Um, but there would be some times I would have to work with engineers to collect other data. And so I would be collecting all this data. And then what I would do is send it to a team of analysts to give insights um, that way. So I primarily act as a facilitator and managing platforms in that role. So before that, uh, you worked as a uh senior digital analytics platform manager at uh, Movoto. Yeah, Movoto, that was more of a startup. So I worked like Ex Hotwire is owned by Expedia Group. So that was a huge company. Harnam worked um, with large companies, so like Twitter and a few huge banks. And so Movoto was um, a small startup, so completely different environment. So I like to say um, bigger companies, you know, they already have their processes established. You can kind of just go with the flow. Um, I, I tell people, if you are ever wanting to work on your side hustle, go to a big company because it will allow you to create that space to do your job, but work on your side hustle. At a startup, you don't have that luxury. You have to wear multiple hats. Um, it's really fast pace and um, you're, it's just a completely different environment, um, different type of stress. So for there, I went in, I re-instrumented um, all their user behavioral data, um, all their tracking data around their form. So um, well, let me take a step back. Movoto is a real estate company. Um, I think they have recently been acquired, so I don't know if their name is still the same, but um, 
they are, were really localized in the Bay Area here to help people find their homes. So our main objective was is for people to, you know, go through the houses, look at all the pictures, but then to fill out leads that we would send to our agents so we would sell homes. So a pretty long sales cycle. Um, and so what I would do is go in and make sure all the data it was being tracked correctly on the website and the apps. Um, but since it is a startup, I had you know, wear multiple hats. So I got to do a lot of analysis um, to understand how the behavior, like the users were using our platform. I got to be heavily involved in like A-B testing, um, right, of the features. And so, um, yeah, I was a platform manager there, but multiple hats. I got to do some product management, some marketing and things like that. So I also love to tell my candidates that at startups, it is a water hose, just fire hose coming at you with a lot of things. But for me personally, um, it's environments like that where I learn the most and grow the most um, because you just kind of have to deal what's coming with you. And then you're not confined into one little box. You'll learn many different roles about how a company is like formed and run. And uh, you worked as a digital analytics uh, uh, product manager at uh, Mo for one year, one month. From wh where? In uh, No, uh, before that, uh, you worked as digital analytics uh, product manager at Mo Incorporation. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, Move. So Move, that was at realtor.com. I think I was there. I think. I must have that wrong on uh, LinkedIn, um, but that is realtor.com. So it's one of the biggest um, real estate websites in the US. Our big competitors were like Zillow and Trulia. And again, the similar type of work where I would um, work with user behavioral data. That one, we did a really big um, platform migration. And so we had to redo all instrumentation, a brand new experience. So that was a little stressful. <laughs> Um, but we used the data to really quickly ramp up and optimize the experience um, to where we needed to be. But again, uh, managed uh, logging platforms and worked a lot with product managers, analysts, and designers. And uh, you worked as a instrumentation manager at PayPal. You worked there for two years, four months. How was that? Yeah, I actually did. We called two tours at PayPal. I was there twice. Um, I love PayPal. PayPal is probably my favorite company I work at. Um, so PayPal is huge. And so they just had an instrumentation department that just worked with engineers and product managers to make sure um, that we were collecting the right data and that the analysts had everything that they need to drive insights. And so my area was consumer. So I worked on like the, the PayPal, like pay and send app the money app, and then also the web experience. And so um, that one was a little more intense because we also built our own internal logging system. And so we managed that. We had like Adobe Analytics um, and a lot of third-party tracking. Um, yeah, and that was also interesting because I supported global teams. So while the other companies I worked at were primarily here in the States, um, you know, I was having calls with APAC, EMEA, like all over. Um, so my days would start like at six in the morning and sometimes they wouldn't end till like midnight um, because of all the global calls, but a really fun environment. Um, that really great um, development for employees. They had a whole um, team just for employee development, which I really loved. It's a really great, um, it was one of the more diverse companies I worked at. So really loved my experience at PayPal. So what do you say about your uh, uh, PayPal Elon Musk? What was, that? oh, about Elon? <laughs> what is my opinions about Elon? Um, wow, my journey with Elon, I would say about 10 years ago, I worshiped the man. Um, me and my best friend, Ayush, uh, we were, we would say we worshiped at the house of Elon, like we just loved him. Um, but then, you know, uh, I, I don't necessarily think uh, a single person should have that much wealth and not actually redistribute wealth to improve the lives of the world. So I, I have a, I have a problem with billionaires. 
basically. I think he does a lot of great things, um, a lot of great inventions, uh, like what he's doing with SpaceX is incredible. Um, but, you know, we have children that need to be fed here on Earth. You met him? No, I have not met Elon. <laughs> no. No, he was, um, he sold, he was out of PayPal well before I was there. And uh, you worked as uh, advanced uh, auto part, I mean, senior uh, web analytics manager two years yeah. ago. Yeah, so this was the company that got me out to California. They are a automotive um, aftermarket uh, reseller. So if you are a DIY or with your car or your motorcycle, um, we would sell all the parts. We actually, our catalog of SKUs of products was over a million. So huge inventory. Um, Advanced Auto Parts is a Fortune 500 company, and at the time, they did not have a website in like 2009, and which I thought was incredible. So we, they got a team together to build them an e-commerce website, um, and that was the first time I got to build something from like nothing up into something with an incredible group of people. Um, when I started, we were doing about um, $10,000 a week in sales. And then when we left, we were doing around like 4 million. <laughs> so it was an incredible journey of just huge growth. Um, and it was also the place I probably learned the most um, in my career because we were such a small team. I got to be involved in every aspect. Our, our leader, um, our senior, um, VP was so transparent with what he wanted, with what the goals are. He took the time to really explain things and get us on board. Um, and I haven't had too many other leaders that led like that. And but, but because of his leadership style, we were able to do amazing things and even overperform way above expectations of what leadership thought for us. So um, yeah, advanced auto parts. I. I worked with instrumentation, um, but also managed other analysts um, and I managed a lot of vendors. So um, that role <laughs> made me realize I did not want to be a people manager. So that's why I took the individual contributor path after that. And uh, you worked as senior web analyst at uh, Nike. Yep, at Nike. Um, yeah. So. That was a lot of fun. I was in digital sport um, for about a year there where I got to work on the Nike running app. Um, and so there I primarily um, analyzed the behavior and made recommendations of how to get people to use the app more, improve activity, um, things of that nature. But throughout that process, you know, my data was not good. And so I, <laughs> I had to, um, uh, get involved more with the data team and so i got to do a lot of instrumentation on that and then um, it was really fun it's a good group of people open to great new suggestions so we get to test new product ideas um it was the best shape i was in my life because you got paid to run so if right before a new release of the app you know you go out for a run and see if it works so i like that and the employee discount was great too and uh, you worked as a web analyst at uh, Best Buy three years there for the three yeah. years, three months. Yeah, so Best Buy um, pretty much um, launched my career. Um, I started out as a reporting analyst, which, you know, I was just, my life was in Excel, creating reports. Um, I would try to make them as pretty as I could, but it's Excel reports. Um, but from there, I actually got to move on to more analytical work where I could do deep dives with category managers and um, give suggestions of how to improve the product. Um, and then it was at Best Buy where I really got interested in about how my data was being collected, where I started learning more of the technical aspects of, of the position. And you worked as web analyst uh, at Marketing Concepts. You worked there for 11 months. Yeah, so Marketing Concepts. So I like, this is how much times have changed and I'm probably aging myself, but I went to school, um, I have a finance degree and a business admin degree. 
Um, my family is has lawyers in it, so I was going to just take a like a gap year and then um, go to law school. Um, originally, I wanted to get into banking. I wanted to get into corporate banking and then corporate law, but um, I wasn't getting uh, the job offers that I wanted. I was just getting like really entry level banking jobs, which you didn't even need a college degree for. So one day I was just looking um, at the open jobs and I came across this role called a web analyst. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting. You get, you know, this data, you get to know your behavior, like your user online. And at that time, I'm like, what? Like you can tell what people are doing online. I was completely fascinated by it. So I just started um, researching it myself and then I applied and I got an interview. So I crammed for two weeks of getting books reading as much as I could to get myself through the interview. Um, and the hiring manager is like, yeah, we like, we think you would be a really good fit. Um, but then I'm like, okay, I, <laughs> I, I actually don't know anything about this role. Like I just learned what I told you in the last two weeks. Um, is that going to be a problem? And she's like, no, I actually admire that you have the drive to learn and do all that. So I, I kind of bluffed my way through getting my first job but then got to learn on the job. They, um, it was a really, really small company, but they're like, if you want books or whatever you need, like we'll buy that for you. So I got to learn and learn all about web analytics. Um, um, Avinash Kashik, his blog really, really helped me um, get through in learning the core fundamentals. Eric Peterson of Web Analytics Demystified, his book um, really helped me. Um, and it created that foundation that launched my career. Um, why I say I'm aging myself is, is there used to be a mindset with hiring managers that would look at you and see what potential you had, to see if you had the drive, if you had the passion, and then they would be like, we want this person and then we'll teach them the skills that we need to get them there. And I feel like now, you know, if you're coming out of college, if you're coming out of boot camp. Um, people see that and like with no experience and they're like automatically dismiss you, right? Um, you know, you're seeing some people, some job positions with like entry level, like need seven years of experience for an entry level job in tech. And that's just ridiculous. So um, I want that same mindset that my first manager had with me that launched my career of really looking at somebody's true potential and then help guide them to get them there. So um, yeah, marketing concepts launched my career. Um, I was deep into Google Analytics. That's what they had in about um, three different websites. One is American Musical Supply, um, which was which is, had significant traffic. So I got to learn all about A/B testing. I got to get enough traffic to, you know, um, do marketing analytics that is statistically relevant. You know, um, sample size and things like that. So um, yeah, I was in my tiny little town that I lived in happened to have a marketing agency and like I got my first job there. So through tags, so why this name? Yeah, so um, I want to change the recruiting experience. So I just recruiting, there was already recruiting experience, so I just shortened it to Crute um, and it's X, the new experience, but X can also denote you know, um, who are you, right? Fill in the blank, whoever you are, like I will represent you um, um, and bring your talents to the table. So a little little double meaning there with the X. So how was the first experience of yours once you started your company as a founder? Oh, it's like really scary um, to not like have that safety net um, that structure that you have in, in companies when you're um, in bigger companies. So um, the first part is just putting yourself out there, um, which was scary. And when I did put myself out there, it was overwhelming how much, how many people wanted to support me. Um, and so if you are out there and you want to try something new, or that's your getting out of college and you want to break into tech or you already have an other career and you want to break into tech, like it's scary. Um, but there are people out there. There's so many people out there that want to support you and see you succeed. So um, that was the first step. Um, 
the second step is as I was doing this and learning, I knew I needed to surround myself with a great support system. So immediately I got myself an executive coach um, to have somebody help guide you, support you, um, you know, even just bounce ideas off of. Um, I uh, joined other groups, right? Um, support groups, so recruiter groups, um, women founder groups, black women founder groups, like all of this, because there's just so many people that want to help you. And so that was really, really, really big for me. And then also, I feel like since I was in tech and um, everything moved so quickly, I felt like I needed to do something now. Like I needed to pursue something like now, 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 I'm not going quick enough. And once I realized I needed to take a step back um, and just show up, keep doing what I do, things will just fall into place. And once I changed my mindset of more of, okay, let's just focus on my mission. I want to help people break into tech. I want to help companies grow. I want, you know, these critical things. Then my contract started falling into place. People just started finding me saying I needed help. And so I'm kind of like, you get what you throw out into the universe. If you throw out like anxiety and like, oh, I need to do this, you're not going to get that. That's what you're going to get back. But if you throw out like positive um, and just really focusing on helping people, what your critical mission is, whatever that is, um, it will come back to you. So I think that was something else that I really learned throughout my journey is, um, is that mind shift attitude of just really being positive and focusing on my mission and my values. Um, and then finally, after that is coming into place and I am now getting more contracts coming in and I'm getting more job placements, is really setting up your infrastructure. And so I'm now working on really the automating as much as I can um, to free up my time. So I'm not doing manual tasks, but I can get out there, speak um, with you, with others, and really um, get my mission across. Uh, so you're being connector, uh, you're being mediator between uh, candidate and, uh, and, and a company. So, uh, so what is the procedure? How uh, uh, you create wealth? Yeah. So first of all, when I meet with a company, I want to know everything about your business, um, everything about your goals and your objectives, um, and then everything about the media team. So I'm not just <laughs> um, taking uh, tasks, right? Um, so once I know all of this, there's times where companies are like, oh, well, we need maybe a senior um, design lead, right? And then when it comes down to it, I'm like, oh, but you said that you want a lot of control over the design. Um, you said that you really want to work closely with the um, product team yourself. So maybe you don't want to waste all your money on the senior design lead. Maybe you just need a UX UI researcher, right? Um, and then they're like, oh, yeah. So that's a way I add value is really um, – working with teams of understanding the job requirements, what they want in success in 60 days in a year, and really seeing if that job that they initially thought is the correct one. And um, I found many times um, it's not the correct one. And so that's your, that's your top of funnel. Like if you have a mismatch of your job requirements and then you get somebody in thinking like this is what they're going to do and it's nowhere near what they were thinking you're going to do, they're going to leave. Um, and so it's really critical to make sure that your job description, your requirements um, are spot on and you're as transparent as possible. Um, if you're going to require somebody to travel 80% of the time, you need to say that and not be like, oh, well, there'll be some travel, right? <laughs> well, that's a lot of travel. And so I really work with um, the company of being really clear and transparent. And then what I do is I create outreach material for the companies, um, which doubles as another branding effort. So this material includes everything you can know about the company, the founder's story. I either get the um, founder to tell me their story and record it, or I document it itself and create a founder story video. Um, I either do video or audio of 
the other founders and the direct team members that you'll be working with. So I find a lot of times candidates really want to know who they're going to be working with, but sometimes you don't even know that till after you start your job. And then you'll be like, oh, I do not mix well with this person at all. So they quit. So I'm trying to give as much transparency to the candidate as possible. So expectations are aligned for the interview process. Um, and so once I create the outreach material with all about the company, all about the team and the roles and everything, um, I use that for sourcing candidates. So I go into different groups, I post on different job boards and things of that nature, give it to the candidates and they say like, whoa, this is really great or, oh, thank you. This is very clear and this is not the role for me. So I'm happy with both. I'm happy when people are like, this is not the role for me because then we're not gonna waste each other's time. Um, and so if candidates are um, want to proceed and then um, I think they're a great fit um, we proceed to make them their candidate profile where they answer the questions, they take the assessments, and then I ship that off to the hiring team. The hiring teams look at these profiles and give me feedback. Um, there's times that they um, can't decide on a couple candidates, so they bring me in and we talk. And so I talk. A really focus when we're narrowing it down to the two candidates is what do you need somebody to do in 60 days, a year, um, and who will best align with that. Um, and so that's another value add that I have is helping people choose the right candidates. Um, so that's my recruiting process. As this all evolves um, too, a lot of companies are talking about retention strategies. So I don't know if you're uh, here in the States, we're calling it the great resignation. So. I think last year, one in four people in the US quit their job. And so how do we get employees to stay and onboarding your onboarding experience? Um, when employees go through that, in their mind, they, they determine whether they're going to stay here for a year or longer, right? So the onboarding experience is very, very critical. So now I started help developing onboarding experiences for companies in the functional area. So not like um, I don't do if you got all your legal papers signed and you went through all, you know, the legal training and policies. I want you, like, let's say you're a front end engineer to be able to do your work on day one. So what does that mean? Like, what environments do you need set up? Um, here's tutorials of how to set up your environments. Here's a tutorial of the existing code base and like best practices for the company of how to work with the code base. Here's the key players that you will need to be in contact with, right? Um, here's everybody on the DevOps team. Here's how the release cycle works. Like all those things that sometimes smaller companies, you know, you have to go to an individual knowledge holder for all of this. Um, I want to document and create um, really great onboarding flows similar to how you would onboard in any sort of product and make it interactive and enjoyable. And so I do onboarding development that way. Um, and the goal is for retention. Um, and then eventually I will start creating solutions for more employee culture and retention. So my value add is I'm, I'm a consultant. I'm a growth consultant, either for a growth for your company or growth for the in individual. Um, and I'm not a recruiter. I view recruiters as a lot of Yes, we'll find you your talent. Here's resumes, push people through the process and don't do the extra um, step of really holistically understanding this situation and being able to pivot if need be. So you're connected with the companies which are there in US or uh, the companies which are from other countries too? Yeah, so my main um, area is the United States right now. That's what I'm really comfortable with and what I know. Um, but I am looking at partnering with other rec recruiters that will be international. So uh, coming to the candidate side, so how they are going to get in, uh, use your service? Yeah, so what I typically like to do is candidates reach out to me and then I like to just have a half an hour meeting um, because I want to make sure that the candidate feels comfortable with me, that we connect um, because it will be, we will work with each other for, you know, a couple weeks um, pretty closely. So 
in this initial meeting, I just like to get to know the person. I like to ask them what their career goals are, what areas that they feel like they've been stuck in, like where do they need help? And then from there, we can start um, creating a strategy. So for example, I am working with two candidates right now. One is just finishing college and the other one is already, you know, established in her career, but wants help with growth. And so for the candidate finishing college, we are really focusing and positioning on her of all of her potential, right? Of all of her drive, all of her successes that she had in college that we're translating that to the two roles um, that she really wants to focus on getting. And so we're updating her LinkedIn and her resume that way. And then um, we are also doing very targeted keyword searches. So recruiters on LinkedIn can find her profile and then getting <laughs> the resume through the applicant tracking systems, right? And so that's kind of like I call the makeover of your resume and your LinkedIn. Um, with the more established candidate, what we what what I find is um, people are afraid to talk about their expertise. And this may be a cultural thing in um, the States, especially about um, and especially with women about being perceived as bragging, like boastful, right? Um, and so with her, I'm really like, like, yo, you're so much better than what you are saying <laughs> on your LinkedIn. Like you've accomplished so much more and we need to talk about all the wonderful things that you're doing. And so I can be a vessel of be like, okay, this is what we're going to say and take that anxiety away of making them feel like, oh, I'm being bragging or boast, like boasting. Um, an update that way and then so we updated her linkedin profile and her resume and already she's just getting um, a lot more views and a lot more activity from that and so once we have that updated i encourage my candidates just to start applying for jobs um when jobs that they like now that everything's like updated um, and then we start working on their candidate profile. And so I choose questions for them to answer that um, are the same tone and feel as their LinkedIn profile and their resume, but we can just get a little bit more in depth now with their candidate profiles. Um, and then once their candidate profiles are developed and ready to go, then my team and me, we go out and find hiring managers, hiring teams on LinkedIn, um, and then we directly reach out to them. So I say, hey, um, I have a really great candidate I would love to introduce you to. Like, here's all their ex like all their qualifications, send the profile. And they're like, yeah, this is really cool. This is like, we wanna meet them and then bring them in that way. And then, so what my team does is we get past the applicant tracking systems by doing directly reaching out and then we get candidates interviews that way. And then once they're interviewing, um, we do coaching on how to give like a proper interview with the STAR methodology. So let's frame all of our questions with the situation, task, action, and results. And so we coach on that to get them through the interview and then they get their job. Um, one other area that I have helped with is the negotiations. I feel like a lot of candidates don't want to negotiate or have um, feel some sort of way about negotiating. So I, I help with that process. And eventually, I just want to insert myself into that process where I negotiate on behalf of my candidate, and they don't even have to negotiate because like it gives people so much stress and anxiety. So I'm um, trying to figure out the best way of me becoming the negotiator. So I've been I've been working on that. So that's kind of the end to end of how I work with candidates. Um, typically, if a candidate goes quickly with giving me the information, we can do everything within two weeks. So uh, how many companies uh, uh, took your service? Um, about six right now. I'm, I'm at max. Like, so I'm hopefully um, I'm in talks with a couple other companies now, and if they come on board, I'll be at max capacity um, for what I'm doing now. Um, and then I can focus on my larger vision. So my larger vision, I will be bu building a platform um, where candidates can log in and like create their interview themselves, where it's not a manual process for me. And then companies can log in and view all the candidates' interviews. Um, and so I hope to start development on that within two months.
and uh, how much you charge uh, for candidates or for the companies yeah so the companies um they pay 30% first year salary for the candidates that i place that includes doing the whole marketing recruitment development and outreach and the delivery of the candidate profiles and any sort of you know extra consulting they might need to get them through the process um the candidates um right now i am running a, a promotion so i'll do the linkedin um makeover and the um rec- uh resume makeover and the development of the candidate profile for $199. Um, And then if they want to use the outreach service where we get them jobs, that is 2% of their first year salary if we get them a job. If they get a job on their own through the other means that we give them, then they do not pay us the the, the fee. Uh, So uh, for, for every candidate, for every country, for example, people from my country, from India, if they want to join or if they want to take your service, the same procedure? Yes, it's the same, it's the same procedure. Um, I will say that I, I do, you know, with that initial meeting, I talk to people and there have been times um, that I have waived fees um, for financial hardships. So I don't want um, the paywall up front to, to be a barrier for people reaching their true potential. So I have done things like, okay, um, once we get you a job, you can pay me the fee after and so so on and so forth. But I, I want to be able to um, help people from all, all types of financial backgrounds. Uh, but uh, for different country people uh, who wants to work in US, they need the visa. So how will be that? Yeah, so I do not help with... Um, uh, acquiring visas. Um, there are some companies that will so, like support you in visa, primarily the larger ones. So if they want to do the outreach and focus on trying to get into like Fang, for example, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, um, or larger companies like IBM or Adobe, where they do sponsor, I can help with that. Um, but we would have to target companies that do sponsor visas um, and a lot of startups here unfortunately at this time do not sponsor visas so do uh, candidates need to have a work experience in order to get the um, work no no so um for people coming out of college you know typically they should have had some sort of internship right Um, But what I found with a few of my candidates that didn't have any work experience, um, that work demo that I give them has gotten them um, into positions. So I will work with somebody to um, on a project to give them that level of experience to get them through the interview. Um, For example, I've had one candidate that was really interested in learning um, e-learning development. I didn't even know this was a role she found it. So in larger companies now, the training teams, um, you know, typically used to be like, oh, we'll do a PowerPoint (laughs) presentation or whatever, are now doing videos and like um, other like PowerPoints, videos, PDF, audio, like full-fledged immersive training experiences in these companies that are called E, um, e-learner developers. And so you'll have to know audio editing, video editing, some design and everything. And like, this is really cool. So um, what we're doing with her, and she has no experience in this, is she's gonna create her own e-learner plan. And then I find free tools for her to develop this. So um, Canva is a great tool that she can use. Um, and then like um, Headliner, for audio editing is another great tool to use. So I find all these free tools for people to use to create their own demo to showcase their talents and abilities. And that that has been enough um, to get interviews, even if you don't have experience. So uh, what, what compliments that you got from the companies that you connected with? Yeah, so um, I guess it was the videos they, Um, I had one um, head of talent I was working with who said he couldn't wait for me to send him the next candidate and just watch all their videos and learn more about them. Um, And so 
I know that the videos are very, very important, but there's a way of delivering these videos. So I um, do the editing of the videos. I add some like background music, um, titles and things of that nature to just really get a more of a vibe. And I even work with candidates on the type of music that they want to that more represents them. And so some might be really upbeat, you know, some might be maybe low bass, whatever, but it's like, it, it reflects their personality more. And so, um, yeah, so for him, he's just like, I can't wait for the next person. Um, because it's, each video was so different, but I felt like I really knew the individual before coming in. Um, other compliments are, was I would have completely passed on this candidate giving the resume. Um, but it was their work demonstration that we were like, wow, we need to bring this person in. And so, um, that, that's great. Um, so those are a few of the compliments that I've got, um, from the candidate side. Um, they really liked my personalization and spending time with them and understanding their needs. Um, and the transparency that I'm bringing to the, to the table. So I've even had candidates that I'm like, I'm sorry, like this, this wasn't a fit. They decided to take another direction. And they're like, oh, but thank you. I love working with you. And can we keep in touch? I'm like, absolutely. And we still keep in touch and I'm helping. And then it transfers them into, um, will you help me find a job? And now I'm working with them finding a job. So um, both sides, it's all about relationship building and connecting. Um, and that's what I'm trying to bring to the recruiting and hiring. So different companies uh, are, are, are offering uh, different different things. Uh, one a few companies uh, offers up, uh, uh, you know, they, they create products, and other companies are create, uh, you know, they they are service oriented companies. So, uh, and when it comes to candidates, uh, you see a lot of different uh, candidates like who came from completely different backgrounds, are having different. Uh, uh, experiences uh, having different educational uh, yeah. uh, background right and also companies have different uh, viewpoints like I I want the uh, uh, they, they are building these kind of products or they are giving these kind of services so from companies per, uh, point of view you know what they need you understand uh, what exactly they are looking for and also you know what candidates are looking for so it is very important for you to understand uh, two sides and connect them and you have to make connected. So that's a very, uh, you know, you know, very intelli intelligent thing. Yeah, it's, I, I'm a matchmaker. I like to say I, I'm a matchmaker. Um, and to be able to have the insight of finding candidates that fit well, that are bringing in transferable skills. So um, I worked with this excellent marketer who was a fifth grade school teacher who went into marketing. Um, but he's like, I was kind of stuck. I, I want to get into tech, bigger marketing, and I don't know how. And he goes, I know nothing about tech. I'm like, oh my gosh, you were a school teacher. We're going to definitely get you into ed tech. Um, they would love to have you in ed tech. You know, the school systems, you know, the parents, you know, the students, like, marketing in that ed tech would be perfect for you. So now I'm introducing him to ed tech companies um, and he's getting traction that way. Um, and a lot of candidates don't, he didn't even really think of ed tech, right? He didn't think there was such a thing of just specific ed tech. So I can match that way. Um, I've worked with, um, uh, the, you know, people coming out from coding boot camps that um, that were previously managers or one one person owned a bakery and he's like I was a baker and like now I'm a coder I'm like oh my gosh you know how to run a business you know deliveries and schedules you know how to manage people like those are all incredible transferable skills that tech needs um so play on that and then so he started taking that more into his interviews and like it it helped him land his job so I also help candidates um who are transferring into tech like what you did before is not wasted all those skills that you had before have helped you build up to this moment for you to transfer and bring it into tech and that's what i really like to highlight too so finding those transferable skills and matching them with industries within tech where they can thrive so you worked in different companies uh, you know the technology side and you, you understand the business side so how is that 
Yeah. So um, with some of the smaller companies, um, knowing the different tech stacks has been really important um, because um, I'm not working all the time with people that really fully um, understand these. And so I'm able to be like, some are like, we want to hire our very first engineer, right? And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so then I can talk to them, understand their current platform, understand maybe where they want to go, right? So if you're really going to um, scale with all the features do you want, you know, you're going to have to get off of WordPress, right? You you don't want to start with a WordPress developer. Let's Let's find you like a full stack with React and cloud services or something, right? So, um, I'm trying to um, bring in that with some of the smaller companies. Um, with some of the larger companies that I work with from the tech side, it's just really good to understand their tech stack and then find a developer that meets those requirements um, further than just, you know, the bullet points that they say, like, must know React, you know, must know JavaScript. Um, so that's that's been helpful to be able to talk to those hiring managers and when, um, Sometimes I just get a, they get a relieved look on their face. They're like, oh my gosh, you actually, actually know this technology. I'm like, yeah. And so I can help um, with the screening process a little bit better than um, a, a, just a typical recruiter. So that's helped out. Um, there's just been opportunities where I'm like, maybe you don't even want to hire somebody right now. I think you really need to bring in a consultant, um, get everything established and then bring on your new hire rather than trying to bring on a new hire and then have them solution it without you having full knowledge that this is the correct solution. Right. Um, and so it's just, again, coming back to being um, that consultant for companies and giving them the solutions that they need to grow, not necessarily what, you know, might not have been their original thought. So I'll put your uh, website link in the description of this video. People who find our video on YouTube can see the uh, uh, your website and can can take your service and also uh, can candidates who wants to join and who wants to take your service can 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 also uh, uh, check out what uh, you are doing. Yeah, so you can uh, my website on LinkedIn. You can message me. Just search for Krista Rhyme. Um, um, and to some extent, I am. I'm not super active on Instagram, but if you DM me on Instagram, I am active on DM. So um, you can reach to me a, a variety of channels and we can connect and talk. So I'll put uh, links in the description. People can see it. And also I'll put the website on the screen. People okay. who are watching us can see on the screen. So at okay. last, uh, as a founder, as a person who worked in very large companies in the world, and uh, have huge experience uh, and have a lot of technical background and also you understand the business now you're owning the business and uh, you create you created your own business and uh, you started uh, doing it so uh, as an observer what do you say about my work as have you seen any videos of mine on youtube yeah i have seen videos so that's immediately what i did when you reached out um I like saw these videos. I ran to my husband and I'm like, check out like what he's doing. This is so cool. What I really loved is that you talk to people from all around the world. So immediately when I started seeing like all the flags, I'm like, this is so incredible to get so many different perspectives um, and across so many different, um, you know, specialties. I, I really think you're doing great, incredible work and then just spreading awareness. Um, it's huge. So just for the candidates that I have talked to, so many, like, they hear, like, we want to get into tech. We want to get into tech. Um, typically, they think tech is cyber security or an engineer, and they aren't, they don't know that tech is so more vast than that. And so you are creating um, a facil facilitating this mechanism of really educating all people of the different aspects of tech, that tech doesn't just look the same, right? It's like more than the Mark Zuckerberg look, you know, there's black and brown people, like all different types of people out there making tech. Um, and so I just loved your channel. So I was really, it, it put a huge smile on my face when you reached out. And uh, what do you say about this conversation and my questioning? 
Yeah, it was a great conversation. Um, you're a great interviewer, a very thorough. Um, but no, I, I like it just more um, casual like this and learning about experiences. So fabulous experience. Thank you. So I, I want you to reach all over the world and I want you to help more companies uh, uh, and also more candidates in the world. I'm sure in coming days, you're going to reach very big places. You're going to work uh, with very big uh, founders, CEOs, and also, you know, a yeah. lot of needy candidates. I'm sure from my side, audience who are watching definitely uh, will reach you and uh, take your service. Oh, thank you. Thank you for reaching out. And I really enjoy getting to know you and keep up the amazing work. Can I put this video on my YouTube channel with your permission? Yes. And also, can I put this video and audio clip on my podcast, the website, internet, social media, everywhere with your permission? Yes. So, yeah, keep going. Uh, keep doing what you love, Piswa, and make people smile. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.